Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, copper. Now copper is a really important material to us. It's got a wide variety of uses because of its physical properties. It's really unreactive, so it doesn't react with water, which makes it useful for making pipes. It's also very ductile, which means it can be hammered into shape to form things like pipes and tanks. And finally, it's also a really good electrical conductor, which makes it good for use in electrical wiring. Copper can be found just here in the periodic table, and this entire midsection of metals are what we call the transition metals. The transition metals includes a whole range of different elements with a range of different properties, things like iron and gold, but we're just going to focus on copper for this lesson. Now, although copper is so very, very unreactive that that makes it desirable to us, uh, the copper on Earth has been around for, well, the entire history of the Earth, four and a half billion years. And so on that kind of time scale, it has finally reacted with various elements, things like sulfur and oxygen. And it's found in what we call copper ores. That is rock which partly contains these copper compounds and partly contains uh, compounds we're not particularly interested in, mainly things like silicon dioxide. So what we need to do is find a way to remove the copper from the ore. If it was something like gold, we could just heat the ore up and the gold runs out straight away because it hasn't reacted. But with copper, we've got to do a chemical process. And there are two key stages which you really need to be aware of. Now, the first stage is something called smelting. And that is that they crush the copper ore up into tiny, tiny little particles and then they heat it up. There are chemical reactions which take place, but you don't need to know about them. That is not something which you need to worry about. All you need to know is the word smelting. The second step in the purification of copper is something called electrolysis. Now, while smelting is something which is difficult to do practically in a school lab because it requires very high temperatures, electrolysis is something which you probably will do as part of your GCSE course. And the way you're most likely to see it is in this form. Uh, you'll use copper sulfate. Now, copper sulfate has a bright blue color. It's really, really distinctive. Um, and it's a salt, so it dissolves in water. If you wanted to make some copper sulfate, you could take a copper ore and throw a load of concentrated sulfuric acid on it. Um, but you'll probably just be given pure copper sulfate, which is then dissolved in water. So you get this nice blue solution. You then stick a pair of graphite electrodes in there and you apply an electrical current. And the process of electrolysis brings the positively charged copper ions out of the solution and they'll collect on one of these electrodes. Let's take a closer look at that. In a copper sulfate solution, the copper ions have a positive charge and the sulfate ions have a negative charge. In electrolysis, opposite charges attract each other. So when you stick your two electrodes into the copper sulfate solution, the negative electrode attracts the positive copper ions and the sulfate ions are attracted to the other electrode. There's a reaction going on there, but you don't really care about it. All you're interested in is what's going on at that negative electrode, which attracts the positive copper ions and you form a load of pure copper all over the electrode. And that's it. That's almost everything that you need to know about copper. Remember, it's desirable to us because it's unreactive with water, it's a good electrical conductor, and it can easily be drawn out into shapes like wires and pipes. We call that ductile. But all the copper in the ground has unfortunately, over the billions of years that it's been sat there, it's reacted away and formed various compounds which we don't particularly want. We want to get the pure copper back. And so that, for the most part, is a two-stage process. Step one, you smelt it, that's when you heat it extremely strongly. And step two, electrolysis. And then you can get the pure copper out of there. We can also recycle used copper in this way to purify it again. The only other thing that you need to know about copper is two important words. The first one is phytomining. That is where plants are grown on an area of copper ore and the plants as part of their natural life processes extract copper ions from that ore. Then they're chopped down and burnt and the copper can be extracted from their ashes. The second one is bioleaching, where various bacteria are introduced to copper ores and again, as part of their life processes, they remove copper from the copper ores and produce compounds that we can then extract the copper from. These techniques have been developed because they have a lower environmental impact and they can actually help process lower grade ores. But still the majority of copper which we're extracting from the ground is extracted using traditional mining techniques. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.